We've seen a lot of changes to FamilySearch in the last two or three years. Can you tell us a little bit about them and why it suddenly seems so much friendlier than it's ever been before? Well, we hope it's, we hope it's enjoyable, we hope it's fun, and, and I think we have to remember a couple of things. We have some, uh, some tools and some technology today that simply didn't exist. And, uh, and, and so early on, uh, you know, even going back to the 1930s when we started getting these records with microfilm, and then we got to where we were using digital cameras, and then we had uh, tools for the temple, and all of those kind of build on each other. And then it's just that we've had kind of an explosion of, of tools for us lately, and, uh, and a web-based approach, of course, is a hugely important thing. And now we're going into, you know, applications on iPads and iPhones, which are, which are relatively new. And we're trying to take what we had before and present it in a different way. And, uh, and I think also we've tried to realize that, that many people just kind of when you talk family history or genealogy, their just eyes glaze over and they say, you know, not for me. And it's, they're not going to say not for me. They're just going to say not for me now because they all know they want to do it, but they, they just have a very hard time getting there. And, and they usually say, it's too hard. I don't know where to start. And my grandmother's done it all. And, and you can take any one or three of those and build a pretty good barrier between you and, and doing it. We want to figure out a way where you, you can get around that. Uh, and so how do you do that? Well, you, you do something that's fun. You do something that's enjoyable. And, and once the people do that, then they'll go to the next step. But if you just try to push them right there to begin with, just get them into research to begin with, most people say I, it, is, it is too difficult. To a certain degree today, we just want to take the research out of it. So when you get a, when you log on to Family Search and you get a hint, you get a record hint. Uh, what you've got is you've got us doing the research for you. So what used to be the most difficult part of Family History which was doing the research, finding the records and, and matching them up. For a significant portion of our patrons, they don't have to do that anymore. I liked what hint. you said a while ago. You said something about the fact that. Uh, you kind of went a different direction from your medical background. You were talking about the customer versus coming from the doctor back to the customer rather than tell us a little bit about that philosophy because I think that's really helped us as users. Well, uh, you know, the fact is I came to this job at Family Church with no kind of genealogical underpinnings. I, I you know, I was a pedestrian family historian. I kept a journal and I had my group sheets and pedigree charts but I, I really didn't know much about it. I did know a fair amount about technology because healthcare is a technology-based uh, industry to a certain degree. But I know that all the time I was running hospitals, we always, the, the pat patients were always frustrated with the experience. And we'd ask them why they didn't like it. And they never could judge whether or not the care was good. They're not capable of judging whether or not they're getting good medical care. But so they would judge us on things like, you know, did they have to wait? Were people friendly? Uh, did they get answers to their questions? And what we found out is that we were delivering really high quality care, but we weren't delivering good customer experience because we weren't addressing the issues they were addressing. So then we began to ask ourselves, how do you figure that out? And what we figured out is we'd always designed that healthcare experience to meet the needs of the healthcare provider. So we designed it to meet the doctor's needs and the nurse's needs but not the patient's needs because we were so concerned about the doctors and nurses getting it right. Turns out that for the things that patients want, it wasn't a good experience. And they couldn't judge the stuff that we had designed it to deliver really well. So what we, what we try to do in many of those cases is to start and say design it so that it's designed from the patient back instead of the doctor out. So if you design it entirely from the, from the patient standpoint, you'd simply designed it a lot different. The wayfinding, the parking, the registration, all those things would be different if you designed it from their view and not from our view. Well, if you take that to a certain degree, there's some similarities between doing that in family history. And that is, we've always designed it from the genealogical view and from the engineering view out. And so what do we want the patron to do that's genealogically correct? What do we want them to do to access the system with the usual predictable results? It's hard and difficult, and they don't particularly know Enjoy how to do it or want to do it. Yeah. So go to the other side and look at, from their eyes in, and what do they want to do? 
well, they don't want to do some of the things we want them to do. And instead of being rather paternalistic and say, you only do what we want you to do, what we said is, well, what do you want to do? Well, what we've learned is they want to do some things different than we want to do. And if we can satisfy their needs first, we'll get them to where we want them to be. But it's too big of a leap to go there originally. So we just started to ask ourselves the question, what would they like to do? Well, ease of access is huge. Uh, finding things, you know, this, this wonderful discovery. I mean, you have somebody discover something and, and you got them. So you can go online now and see photos of your ancestors that you've never seen before that your relatives put in. That's a discovery. People like that. It's addictive. Hey, you find out you look like your great-great-grandmother and you had not a clue. Not a clue. You've never seen yeah. that photo. And I, I go on, I think on my my site on Family Search, there's about 250 photos on there. I put in about 20 of them. All the rest are put in by somebody else, which I get to enjoy. And so all of a sudden, I find something there I like. And, and then pretty soon you see the photo and you want to see some information about the person and then you want to see who their parents were and you want to see who their descendants are. And then pretty soon you present that in a, in a fun way and then they're doing what they never thought they would do. They're actually doing research. And you give them a record hint and say, oh, by the way, wouldn't it be fun to see a census document with your grandfather in it from 1940? Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Well, guess what they are now? They're genealogists. <laughs> but you can't start off that way. You have to start out designing it from them back and then I think you get you, you, you get it to work. So it's a simple concept. It's not there's not there's no rocket science there. It's just a simple concept. But it can make a big difference in how people view it and engage. So you said you were making incremental changes day by day to the site and to the experience and I guess drawing upon the new technology. Tell us a little bit about some of those. Well, one of the things that you realize is that you that you have uh, you have the old days where we used to make a lot of changes and then on one day we would kind of turn the switch on and you get all the changes at once. And that's not very efficient from an engineering standpoint and it's very confusing from a patron standpoint. So we would, one day we would go and turn on new.familysearch and, uh, and then all of a sudden everybody had to learn something new. Well, those days are over. Uh, you just don't do it that way anymore. So what we'll do is we'll we'll turn on a feature and then we'll just every day test something out. I'll give you an example. When we first put up photos and stories, across the menu, we, we put up photos and stories. One day somebody suggested that we put up memories. So we simply put photos and stories under memories and put memories and then we tracked it for a couple of days and the number of people clicking on it went up significantly from when we had photos and stories. Photos and stories are located under memories. So we had an idea, we put it up, we tested it out for a couple of days, the response was better, now that's part of our, our, our website. And so imagine doing that several times a day. Colors, words, linkages, click-throughs, we're always making those adjustments and it just gets gradually better every day. Now sometimes we do have kind of major features or, or releases, but, but you just improve it all the time and, and all of that compounds and that's what causes the increase in in usability, so to speak. That's absolutely wonderful. That's so exciting. So you also have a lot of new partners, so you have a lot of additional information from what you've had in the past. Well, of course, we, we will never have the ability to do all that we need to do, so what do you do? You go to people that are doing the same thing we're doing, and you say, can't we partner? And fortunately, we found people who are very, very willing to do that. They're not only willing to share records and, and ideas, they're willing to share technology and concepts and theories. If one of them's got a better search and match algorithm we have, then, then, and we'll share with them. We have nothing to hide. We're sharing everything. We're not in here to make money, so we share everything. And, uh, and they've been so generous and so good. Uh, these partnerships are just, I think, one of the jewels in our crown right now of helping our patrons do what they couldn't have done without it. What's it meant for the amount of information that's available to us now? Well, if you just look at pure records, uh, and that's only one of the measures, but right now with our partners, we have about three times more records available to the members of the church through these partnerships than we had before. So think about 100 years collecting records and in 18 months tripling that by virtue of collaboration. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dennis. All we right, thank it. you. So great to have okay. you. You bet. Enjoy.